Hey, Raindrops. Yes, up next, we have an exclusive video that you are going to enjoy. It's good, it's fun, it's messy. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Enjoy. But the thing is this, I have to say, you are not an 8.5. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you are gorgeous. Thank you, you're so sweet. Can and I, I'm not just saying that. Thank you. Can I, can I explain that though? Like well, yes, but first, <laughs> everybody, welcome to Reality with the King. I have talked about this woman recently on my podcast doing the reunion of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and I'm so happy she said yes when I reached out to her, like, girl, I want to talk to you because, you know, I know a little sum sum, <laughs> you know, as I'm watching the show, so please give it up for the beautiful 10 across the board, bitch. Aunt Marie Wiley. Thank you for having me, Carlos. No, I'm excited thank to be you. here. You're thank not an you. 8.5 at all, babe. Thank you. Okay, wait. First, I have to say Anna Marie. Anna Marie. Anna Marie. That's why you're here. We're going to clarify something. Yeah. So it's yeah. Anna Marie. Anna Marie. You're not an 8.5. <laughs> okay, so let's go into that quickly. Okay. So, okay, this is how I approach that. I was an athlete growing up, right? And so I'm like, I'm never going to have a coach that's like, you're perfect. Everything you do is perfect. There's no room for improvement. You had a perfect game. My mindset is like, there's always room for improvement. You can always be better. You can always create a better version of yourself. And so one of the things that like I love about my husband and we play off each other really well in this regard is that we always push each other. And like, he's my best friend. Like we have that kind of relationship. He's never gonna be like, oh babe, you're perfect. Everything you do is perfect. And like, you know, you don't need to do anything better. He's like, he's honest with me. I'm honest with him. And that's why I love him because I'm like, I never have to guess if anything that he's telling me is true. Mm. Because I'm like, if he's like, you're an 8.5, I know he's telling me the truth, right? <laughs> if that looks stunning on me, I know it really does. Cause he's not just That's pandering true. to me. He's not just pandering, saying what he thinks I need to hear. And like, you know, I have, I have healthy self-esteem like that. Like I don't, I don't need to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nothing's perfect. You can always be better. No, not at all. And, and that's the thing about you because when I watch you on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I was so intrigued because it's not easy. And trust me, I know this. Yeah. It's not easy for a newbie to enter a, a show that's been on for many seasons and have a voice. It's, yeah. it's very intimidating. And you came in like a wrecking ball. Hey, Molly <laughs> Cyrus. And, but I, I was so intrigued, really intrigued by you. Um, I obviously did not... And so did the raindrops and a lot of people who, you know, watch the show. I never felt like I knew you. Yeah. And what I want to do really briefly is I want to get to know you because, like you just said, you are an athlete. So, like, talk to me about your childhood. Were you, like, the girl that did volleyball, cheerleading, basketball, all those things? Yeah. So let's, like, let's bring it all the way back. Let's start from, like, the very beginning. So I'm biracial. I was uh, put up for adoption when I was born. Uh, my mother is Dutch. My biological father is Nigerian. Um, and I, I've never met them. So they put me up for adoption when I was born. You never met your I've father. never met them. Um, so they put me up for adoption when I was born. Uh, I was adopted at two weeks old by a Dutch Indonesian family. So I grew up, you know, as a biracial girl in an Asian household. Um, and then my parents got divorced when I was 10. So I was raised by my mom, by a single mother. She raised me and my two sisters. Um, I grew up in a very small farm town, about an hour outside of Vancouver in Canada. Um, and yeah, I was super into sports. I started running track when I was five. Um, I did that all the way up to high school and then switched over to like basketball. Yes, volleyball, like all the things, but basketball was my primary sport. And I played that through high school. Like I said, I played in college as well. Um, and that was really my vehicle to, you know, get my, my degree. I got my, um, bachelor's degree in nursing, um, you know, cause I didn't, I didn't grow up with a lot, right? Like I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I had to work really hard and make really good decisions to be where I am now. So played basketball in college, got my nursing degree. Um, I moved to LA six months after I graduated and then I became a CRNA. Um, met my husband, who was an NFL player. Um, we got married four children later. Um, we started a nonprofit foundation to help um, youth in underserved communities. And then I was 
out of the blue asked to be on a reality show. So there you go in a nutshell. That's Anna Marie. <laughs> wow. So one of the biggest things that you just said that really really makes me understand you more too is the fact that you never met your biological parents and being a biracial girl growing up in a pretty much an Asian family, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. What was that like for you in terms of your identity? Were you aware that you were black, biracial? Was that confusing for you at all? It. I'm so glad you asked that. It was, um, it was, I was always the anomaly. I was always the girl that was different. I never quite fit in anywhere. Um, I, there were not a lot of black people where I was from. So I was always the only black person. Um, and you know, it was, it was hard, like not seeing people that look like me. And I think that was, um, you know, kind of one of the factors for me moving down here as well, because I didn't want to always be different. I didn't want to always have to explain everything from, from the smallest things to like, why do you wrap your hair at night to like, mm -hmm. you know, why, you know, I have a, I have a muscular frame. I feel like that's sometimes a little bit more accepted by like the black community maybe, um, as an athlete. And so, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was hard. Um, I struggled with my identity a lot growing up. And then even when I moved here, you know, I felt like I wasn't black enough for the black girls, but I wasn't white enough for the white girls. So I was always kind of this other category. And, you know, I just eventually, you know, matured and got to this age and this space in my life where I just really came into my own and became comfortable with who I am and just kind of embraced it and was like, you know what, I'm not like anybody else. And that's okay. That's what makes me me. That's what makes me unique. And I'm going to celebrate that. You know, my husband, one of the things that he told me when we first um, met, and I'll never forget this, he's like, you need to always be your own biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. He's like, no one should cheer louder th for you than yourself. And I've always carried that with me. Mm -hmm. Did you have any <clears throat> black women that were like your mentors who can like, educate you on, on, like you said, the stuff like wrapping your hair at night yeah. and just like the, the plights that black women go through. No. No, I didn't. I mean, you know, Vancouver at that time, like I think there was maybe one black hair salon, but you know, it was like two hours away from where I lived. Um, so my mom, she used to do my hair when I was little. I remember sitting there in the middle of the kitchen, her doing my hair, I, it's so funny. I posted about it this morning, actually, and I, I hated it. I, it. I hated it so much. Both of my sisters, uh, one is Dutch Indonesian, one's half Filipino. So, you know, they've got really straight, um, dark hair. And so, you know, they're outside playing in the sandbox, doing all the things. I'm sitting there in the kitchen, getting my hair done and just wishing mm. that I had hair like my sisters and like the rest of my family. Um, so, no, I, I didn't learn to wrap my hair until maybe... 10 years ago. Like I just, there was, there was no Anna one. Anna Marie 10 years ago. 10 years ago, Carlos. There just, that's, that was not my upbringing. There was, there was not a black community for me. Um, when I started running track, when I was 12, um, there was, you know, another, um, black family who lived in another city and my mom and her bonded over my hair actually. And so my mom used to drive me to her house about an hour away. And this woman was so kind. She used to braid my hair for me. So I started getting my hair braided when I was, I think 13 years old. And that was, you know, my, my introduction to that, but that's kind of where that was the extent of it. And then when I went to college in Vancouver, um, I started driving over the border to Seattle to black hair salons. And, you know, that's when I was introduced to like hair extensions and, and all those kinds of things. And then, you know, I moved to Los Angeles shortly after that. And then, you know, my, my brain just went like, whoa, cause it was just, it was a whole new world of stuff. And I'm like, wow. Like I, I was like a sponge, just like absorbing all this black culture that I, I didn't grow up with. And I was just so, so curious to learn. So yeah, it was, um, moving here was a very, very big learning experience for me. Do you have any desire to find your biological parents? Uh, oh. um, so, um, I didn't growing up, 
my older sister was also adopted. She's um, half Indonesian and half Caucasian. And she's four years older than me. And she didn't have any desire to. So I think because she didn't, I just kind of followed suit. Like, oh, my big sister doesn't care. So I don't care either. Like, and my family is wonderful. I grew up in the most loving, huge Indonesian family, just the, the most amazing, loving family. Um, so no, I, I didn't, I didn't really care. And then, um, as time has kind of gone on and, um, I lost my mother this past year. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, 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 after that happened, um, I've, my curiosity has kind of grown and, my older sister in, I guess about three months ago now, um, after our mom passed, she became more curious and she had sent away for additional um, adoption paperwork that I didn't even know existed. And the paperwork contained her biological father's um, name in it. And she actually found him on Facebook. So she reached out, the craziest story, um, they were both separately married, her parents. They conceived her, broke up, gave her up for adoption. A year later, they got back together and they've been together for 40 years. So she just reckoned, she just found them. So she has, you know, her parents are together. She has four brothers and sisters. Everyone in, in her biological family has, you know, fully embraced her. She has this whole, it's like a puzzle piece that she's had put back into place. So that happening for her has sorry okay. it has made me feel that void in my life um and then um there's this story that um i actually told erica and dorit when we were in spain at the paella dinner um I have a friend here in LA that lives in um, this gated community and oh thank you. Okay, okay. Oh my god, like all the real stuff. Um she lives in this community and one day I was visiting her house and um the security guard and I were chit-chatting on my way in and he's um Congolese and he's like, "Sister, where are you from?" And I said, oh, I'm half Nigerian. And he's like, okay, well, like, have you been? And I said, no, I haven't. I was like, I was adopted. Um, I don't know much about the culture and I, I don't know my family there. And he said, you were adopted and you're Nigerian. And he said, who's Nigerian, your mom or your dad? And I said, my biological father. And he said, you need to find him. He said, he doesn't know you exist. Mm. He said, biological men or biological, or sorry. He said, Nigerian men don't leave their children. You need to find him because he doesn't know that you exist. Um, so, and, you know, Doreen and Erica were, you know, they were so awesome when I told them this. They were so supportive and so loving. Um, um, so that in combination with my my older sister just finding her biological family and my mother passing so suddenly mm -hmm. um it really does feel like i have this huge void in my life now and um so i i also sent away for the same paperwork that my sister did that and i'm waiting for it to come back now and i'm hoping that there is you know a name or something in it additional that you know can hopefully lead me in that direction to try to find him mm -hmm. um the paperwork that i do have currently um it my my biological mother had expressed in it that she didn't want me to try to reach out to her or try to find her at all um she just believed that she wasn't equipped you know, at the time to take care of a child, which, you know, I fully understand and I fully respect. Um, but because it doesn't have any mention of him, um, it, it does, it does make me wonder if he, if he knows that I exist. Yeah, no, it, it's deep because, um, obviously it was also an interracial relationship mm -hmm. and we don't know what that was like for your mom to deal with in her household with her parents That's right. and whether or not, you know, um, 
getting pregnant by a black man right. was something that just was, was was very taboo at the time. We just don't know. But right. um, the spirit that I'm very spiritual. Yeah. The spirit that I'm feeling right now is I also agree with him that I don't think your father knows. And listen, everything happens for a reason. That's Absolutely. just the way the cookie crumbles. Absolutely. And I think your visibility right now um, could also include you reconciling with your biological dad and having that relationship. And the story I want to share with you, and I'll move on from this after that, but my Miami realtor, mm -hmm. her name is AJ Crowder. She's married to Channing um, Crowder, who has a podcast. And she recently met her biological father a couple of years ago. Oh, wow. And he now works for her brokerage. They're super close. Oh. And, you know, like, she's like our age, you yeah. know, she's not as, you know. And she's just like, she had to find him. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's beautiful to see this adult rump woman um, have this. And they're like this. They're like super tight. And it happened the way it was supposed to happen. Yeah. But my, my point in saying that is it's never too late. You're right. And he's such a good grandfather to, you know, his grandkids. And they cannot get enough of him. I love that. And they all live in the same, you know, community mm -hmm. in Florida. So I wanted to share that to you so that you're aware that it's never too late. Yeah. And my, my prayer... Um, tonight that I'll, when I speak to Jesus, honey, because I do it every night, child, <laughs> is I'm going to include you on my prayer list because I, I want that for you. Thank you. And it's sad because these are the things I wanted to see on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Because, you know, listen, I'm a huge fan of the show. Mm -hmm. And when you came on the show, I'm like, wow, she's kind of like the most unlikable person <laughs> on this that I've ever seen on Housewives. Like, Agreed. <laughs> What is going on here? And you know, I'm like, I want to give sister a chance. Cause you know, <laughs> you, listen, one thing about black people, we're like, I'm a ride for you. Cause when black people watch Family Feud, yeah. spoiler alert, we root for the black people. <laughs> <laughs> if we're watching Family Feud, we root for the black families. Right. It, it is what it is. So right. of course we're like, you're like, come on, you, come on, prove us you're right. Your heart, sis. So right. how did you get the call to? To even like, did you audition casting no. tape? I, I I didn't audition for. Well, okay, so this is how it happened. Um, Kyle, um, so when we moved from our old home to our new home two and a half years ago, we bought our house through the agency, right, Mauricio's um, company, and then maybe so pa fast forward to the holidays right before they they asked me to come on okay so december 2000 what is this 2022 maybe mm -hmm. and they had um a vip event for some of their clients at their home my husband and i are running around the holiday scene doing all the parties and we're like oh it's on our street they live on our street so we were like yeah let's go drop by so we go and they thought my husband was like hysterical because he is such a character and so they totally hit it off and um i i didn't even talk that much that night um, and then, so fast forward three months, um, Kyle sends me a message and she's like, Hey, we just started filming season 13 of housewives and the producers are interested in talking to you. Do you have any interest? And I show this to my husband. Cause I was like, like what? And like, what do I do with this? Cause this had never been anything that was like, you know, on my radar in my realm. You know, I was very happy being like a private person. My husband obviously is a public person, very happy being a private person, taking care of the home, the family, going to work, doing all my things. And, um, I never really saw myself in that light, but, um, and my husband was like, you know what? I've been telling you for years. He's like, you're such a dynamic person. You're a multi-hyphenate. You have this huge personality and, and a story to tell. He's like, I think you should do it. He's like, I think it would be a great platform to get your message out. Ultimately, I just want to inspire and motivate people. That's literally all I'm about. And he's like, I think this would be a great platform for you to do it. And I was like, you know what? Say yes. Say all the yeses. Like, why not? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm in this point in my life. I'm 41 years old. Why not? Um, so, um, they called me like two seconds later and then casting called me two seconds later, right after that. Um, I did my casting tape maybe two days later and I was filming it within two weeks. 
What? Yeah. So they had already been filming for six weeks when they reached out to me. And then, so then I was just kind of, you know, went in there week eight and yeah. So that was, that was that. (laughs) Did you watch the show prior to being on it? I'd watched maybe the first, maybe like five seasons or something, you know, like way back in the day, like, you know, before kids, before I was married, all that kind of stuff, but I hadn't watched it and I don't know how many, however many years. So when when they when they cast me and when they were working when my contract was being negotiated, um, I binge watched all of last season because I was like, "Who are these people? What is happening? What am I about to do?" Like I didn't know anything. So I binge watched it, and then and then yeah, I, first night show up at Kyle's house for the weed dinner. So that was it. That was it. It happened very fast and fully, fully out of nowhere. What's funny is, again, me being a producer, yeah, I see things that the audience may not always see, right? For sure. For sure. So I knew the moment you were inserted. Yeah. I said, nothing was happening the first couple of weeks, clear- clearly, and they needed a fireball to come in to sort of like change the temperature in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, Teddy Mellicamp is a good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. I've been on her podcast. And she and I even talked about the fact, because she filmed a scene that never aired. Yeah. And what's funny is the scene she and I spoke about on her podcast, uh, she got into it with somebody. I'm like, oh my gosh, Teddy's <laughs> back. And I'm like, girl, are you going to like be a friend of? And she said, they called me to come back. And I said, uh-uh, I need to get paid. Really? Yes, we talked she about that. She didn't tell this. me that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's like, you know, and I was like, well, girl, nothing must be happening then. And then when I'm watching the show and I saw you enter yeah. the weed dinner, I'm like, okay. And what I enjoyed about you is you did not seem intimidated. The camera does love you. Oh, thank You're you. You're very comfortable. Thank you. And that's a very intimidating crowd to be around. I mean, mm-hmm. to be at a dinner with Camille Grammer, Denise Richards, and the beauty of you, Anna Marie, you were sort of like the voice of the audience because you were like, okay, what's going on here? Right. I'm like, what what's are we happening? talking about? What exactly? I'm confused. Yeah. Did you get inserted because nothing was happening and they needed to make sure that you came in and made shit pop? Um, I don't know how to answer that. Um... But, you know, you've been in this space for a very long time. And um, they, I mean, they they had a reason for having me come in mid-season, you know. I don't know exactly what that is. I feel like, you know, I, I kind of think you said it well. Like, I, I think you know what the reason was. Um, because I, I don't think they usually have people enter mid-season uh, unless there is a clear reason for it, what that reason was. I don't, I don't know exactly. Did you ever feel like you were there to fill a black quota? Um, I don't know. I don't know really. Um, I, I felt like going into it, I really thought that it was more of a family thing. Like I thought that they really wanted to show my life and my family, you know, because all the things that I kept seeing in the press um, when they found out or when it was leaked that I was going to be um, filming for the show was about how she has this this big full life. You know, she has a famous husband. She has a career. She is a philanthropist with a foundation. Um, she has four children. Like, they just kept talking about this big full life that I had. And so that was actually the reason that I thought that I was, you know, inserted into the cast because I thought that they, you know, wanted to show a, a different element. You know, I thought they wanted to show somebody that, you know, could could kind of check a lot of boxes and fill a lot of spaces and kind of maneuver through the girls and um, the dynamics because I'm a people person like I can get along with anybody literally anybody and when you say that it seemed like I was really comfortable when I came in and I was at that dinner it's like I mean I'm around a lot of famous people a lot right like it is it's never been about me but 
it's, I've always, I've been around it for 12 years, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't an intimidating thing in that regard. And, you know, going back to when we were talking about, you know, me moving here and me finding my identity and, and really finding my voice, like all that really, really hard work that I had to do on myself really gave me a strong sense of who I am. And so there aren't many situations that I I really feel uncomfortable in because I've, I've lived that, you know, I had 20 years of feeling uncomfortable and I'm like, now I'm like, I'm grounded in who I am. So there, there, so it was, I didn't feel, I didn't feel com or uncomfortable walking into that group of ladies. And I, I thought that, I thought that that's what the show wanted to highlight. Well, no, I was excited when you were announced because the thing about the show that I felt was missing is we want to see a wealthy black family, mm -hmm. you know, black husband, black wife, black yep. kids. That's right. You know, like we desire, and by we, I'm speaking of the community, right? Yes. <laughs> we yeah. desire to see like, we want to see a wealthy black we family. See black wealth. This is this is Beverly Hills. Yeah. Black wealth, minority wealth is everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Because y'all are wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also very humble. I'm just going to put that right out there. Like, I, yes, yes, we are wealthy. But I, I've, I'm i not the person that's going to be like, you know, I know this person and I know this person and this, these are my circles and this is what I have. Like, you know, when we were, when we were filming, like, what is, what's the most expensive thing your husband's ever bought you? And I was like, I'm not going to answer that. Do you know, because that's just not, it's just not my personality. Do you know what I mean? You can look at my lifestyle and you can see what I have, but I'm not the person that's going to be like, you know, what, what, what's that, what is that thing they say? Like, um, oh, what is it? Confidence is quiet. Like something like. Yeah, no, it's, 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 um, yeah, it's something like. Help me, help me, Carla. No, 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 no. Look, <laughs> let me help help me. Okay. It's something like, um, money's loud, but confidence is quiet. It, it's something along those lines. Whereas when you have a lot of money, you don't brag about it. Yeah. Because like, it's sort it's, of like, if, if. You can you can you can see when someone has it, they don't have to tell you. And when your confidence is quiet because people, you know, they they see it. Yeah. And that's what we saw with you. And we have a mutual friend in common because they had his name is Justin Gidron. I think he's friends with your Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh yay. Oh, I love him so much. I didn't now, know that. Yeah. We've been friends since I was an intern at like BET back in like two thousand like five. I can't. And he and I are super close oh. and he posted in his stories. You had a premiere party. Yes. And um, I'm like, yo, you know um, them? And he said, Lowe's, they are good people. We are good. And I, I want I want the world to know because my mutual friend and his wife, they were at your house. Yeah. And he said to me prior to even us watching you on the show, he's like, you're going to love them, Carlos, because they are good people and they're funny and they have it. So I want the world to know that there's people in my life who I trust that has said nothing but great things about you and your family. Yeah. I mean, I that's one thing I will brag about. I'll brag about my family. <laughs> like are, we we are we are, we are we are good people. Um my husband is the most intelligent, kind-hearted individual I have ever met. Like he what he does for me what he does for our children, what he does for the community, the kids that benefit from our foundation, all the kids he mentors, the kids he coaches. He is the most stand-up person. And, and that's why I married him. I'm like, I want that. I, I literally, I want to be like him. And that's why I'm with him. And I wanted that for my children. You know, again, not having, you know, that strong black community growing up in, I was like, there are, there are things that I can't teach my children. And I know that because I don't even know them yet. I need a man that is going to be so strong and so steadfast that he can instill in my offspring those things that I don't even have. That's why I chose him. But we we are. We are the people. Like, now that I, you're friends with my friends, we're friends. Like, yeah, that's no. us. That, no, seriously. <laughs> yes. Like, you're coming over to play pickleball tomorrow. Like, that. That is that is the Wileys. We call our house Wileys World. If we have mutual friends, you're my friend. Because it's like you're vetted. 
Do you know what I mean? And that's how we approach like everybody. That's why you won't find anybody that has that anybody that knows us, you you won't find anybody that has anything bad to say about us because we pride ourselves on being good people because that's just who we are. We we are very honest. We're very honest. We love having fun. We love people. We always have people over at our house. Like we just so yeah, I'll I'll brag about my family all day, but you know, and going back to like the money piece and everything, it's like, you know, like uh, I know I know billionaires who walk around in t-shirts. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I you you know. You know what I mean? Like you know like the most famous people in the world are not doing that. Like why would I that and that's just because it's my reality. And so, you know, when we're when at the reunion, it was so funny when Andy asked that question. He was talking about Sutton's income from her her spousal support. And then he's like, Anne Marie, what do you think about that? And I was like, Andy, why are you asking me that question? And Marie's like, that's what he does. But, you know, and my answer was that, you know, like, that's just not, that's not what me and my circles do. Cause it's like, why, it's your reality. So why would you do it? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. you can see it. If you can see it, then why do I have to? Oh, honey, I can it? see it with you, honey. We, we just, saw it. But what we didn't see, though, Anna Marie, we did not get a chance to see any house reality with you. We did not. Were Were you taping scenes with your husband and your family at home? A ton. That we just never saw? A ton. Why weren't we able to see these scenes? I don't know. When you talk about the fact that your announcement was leaked, what was also leaked were these uncoverings of uh, people saying that your husband was saying transphobic comments. Um, did that have anything to do with these scenes being cut out? I have no idea. But I'm, you know, I am so happy to address that. And I also want to make it very clear that calling someone transphobic is a very hurtful, very disgusting, and very damaging thing to say. Um I'm not transphobic. I support the trans community. I support trans rights. I support women's sports. No one is transphobic. Um, so we, you know, we did we did film that. Um, and you guys filmed the conversation about the transphobic remarks. We did, yeah. We did. Really? Yes. And I who's, who's we? All the ladies. It was all of us together. All the housewives. All the housewives oh. together. We filmed this. And um, you know, it was literally hours and hours of me being badgered and attacked on on this this topic and you know my my stance was and I was very clear about it didn't shy away from it at all was that um you know the issue arises because um of the topic of transgendered female athletes competing in um, sports with cisgendered female athletes and you know my husband's stance on it is that he, you know, is not in support of it. He's in support of there being safe spaces for everybody. Um, and, and I agree with that. And, you know, so we, I, we talked about this. Um, you know, I said things like, you know, if you're comparing hand size, heart size, lung capacity, muscle mass, you know, all of wingspan, all of those sorts of things, then there is going to be an advantage in one over the other. And as a female athlete who played, you know, for so many years, I can I I can see that and that's why, you know, that's why I say that. You know, and I brought up comparisons to them. You know, I was like um Lisa Leslie versus LeBron James. Lisa, I love you by the way. She's like a dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Um Lisa versus LeBron, right? I was like what's going to happen? Um Serena versus Djokovic, right? What's going to happen? Like I think and, you know, they, none of them were athletes. So it's hard to have, it was hard to have that conversation with them in that regard, because I think they were just so focused on how is the audience going to take this? Pandering, right? It was, mm -hmm. it was all about pandering and virtue signaling. There wasn't any, you know, rational, logical conversation behind it, because this isn't something that they, you know, they're just, they just want to label me as transphobic. Like that, that standing up for women's sports and believing that there's a biological difference if someone has gone through male puberty, that doesn't make me or my husband trans, transphobic. We support the trans community. We support trans rights. We support women's sports, 
right? Um, you know, I there's a there's a video of um, Serena Williams from oh years ago. She was on I want to say Letterman, and you know she essentially says the same thing too. She was talking about I think it was Andy Andy Murray had asked her to play against him, and she's like. If I played against Andy, he would beat me 6-0, 6-0 in like five to six minutes, maybe 10 minutes. But like, you know, it's it's a different, it's a different sport, right? Men's tennis, women's tennis, it's a, it's a different sport. She's like, they're stronger, they're faster, he would destroy me. I don't want to play with them. I don't want to play with, I want to play women's tennis. She's She said this, you can Google it, right? So, but this was pre this whole issue of, or topic of, transgendered females competing in cisgendered um, sports. And so before it was an issue, nobody really cared. But now that it's such a big issue, um, nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to touch it because look what happened to us. We get labeled transphobic for doing it. Behind closed doors, please trust and believe 90% of people think that way. It's just that we live in a society where if you say things like that, you're going to get quote unquote canceled or labeled or something. People are so afraid of telling the truth and going back to who the Wileys are. We are truth tellers. Um, and you know, there are, there, there is another housewife that, that even agreed with me. We had this conversation and she agreed. She's, she agreed with that stance. Oh, Garcelle agreed with that stance. She won't say it publicly, of course, but yeah. So, you know, and then there was a whole nother issue also talked about that night and something floating around from that that recent article saying like, oh, you're best friends with Candace Owens. And let me we're going to let's talk about that. Go ahead. I have never met Candace Owens. I don't know her. Um, remember years ago when that campaign came out. There was a, a fashion designer, a fashion house that put out a campaign that, you know, was basically theorized to be like a, a pedophile, a, you know, a pedophile campaign. And, you know, I'm a mother to four children. I was, I was outraged. I'm just going to put that out there. I was absolutely outraged when I saw this. And I felt like there were a lot of people that weren't talking about it. I was, you know, waiting, like, where's the outrage? This, this is children we're talking about. This is not okay. And Candace Owens was one of the very few people that I felt like was actually speaking out about it. So I started following her on Instagram. And from following someone on Instagram to them becoming your best friend, it's a very, very big space between there. Who labeled you and Candace Owens as being best friends? It came, When I started filming... Last year, it like one of you know the the blog site or not like a site it was it was written it was a written article that said like Anna Marie Wiley wife of Marcellus Wiley filming for Housewives and um um he's transphobic and the Wileys are transphobic and she's best friends with Candace Owens like that's where all this stuff came from. Did someone on the show address the Candace Owens? Well, yeah. Then, well, Garcelle kept saying, well, it was the Candace Owens of it all for me. And then when you see the new article that just came out a few days ago and with all of the quotes from Garcelle and Crystal, which I found very suspicious, um, it, you know, it went back to when we were at the reunion and when I, you know, called out the double standard or the hypocrisy of Garcelle you know, labeling to read a Karen because she used the word attack when she talked about her. And when I said, why is it that when Dorit says that to you, it's not okay? And and let me also say this. The first thing I said was that I agreed with Garcelle. You should not call black women angry and you should not call black women aggressive. I said, I agree with that Garcelle. But I also want to point out this. Why is it that when Dorit does it to you, it's not okay? But when Sutton does it to me, no one says anything. You didn't, you didn't even say anything. You didn't, you didn't stand up for me and you didn't say anything. Um, what did she say to that? Because I watched that reunion so that's, and they so that's never what she said. So she, she never, said, never aired the comment. She that's what she said. She in that article, it says what she said. She said. Oh, you want to know why? Because as soon as I found out that you were best friends with Candace Owens, I decided I don't mess with you. 
you hear that, Bravo? You better leave that in, Bravo. That's what was said. And you can read that in that article. That's coming from that article, and that's what was said. So, again, it goes back to her, you know, trying to be, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you out there as the other black woman who, you know, is best friends with Candace Owens, the woman I've never met before, because I'm going to, I'm going to power to the people that, you know, correct. When you came on the show, do you think Garcelle wanted to be the only black woman on Beverly Hills Housewives? I did get that feeling. Was she welcoming to you? Um, She was, and then she wasn't. She was, and then as the show started airing and playing out, and, you know, all of a sudden I'm being portrayed in this light and I'm the quote unquote villain, at least I think I was, then she wasn't anymore. Um, and then I think, you know, that's what you, why you saw, or sorry, you didn't see, but that's why you're hearing now of what she said at the reunion, because I think now she's like, well, people don't like her anyway. So why do I have to stand by her? I don't, I don't need to stand by her. So, and you know, she was very, she was very quick to, and I, and I don't, I really don't think she liked me pointing out that hypocrisy because I think that she's been able to get away with unnecessarily playing the race card so many times unchallenged because who can challenge her, right? The, the other ladies can't challenge her. So I think that's been her play for so long. So then when I'm there and as a black woman, I can say, you know what? Why didn't you speak out about my microaggressions or at least support me? And she didn't like that, right? She didn't like that at all. And, um, so I think that that, sorry, I'm just like having a little brain fart here. Do, 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 no, no, do. no, no. I, I think what you're saying is the fact that it was unfortunate because you came on the show yeah. and, and obviously, you know, there's another black woman there. Um, again, we, the audience was excited. Yes, Garcelle, you have somebody at least yes. that can relate to you on these issues. And you're telling me that the stuff we did not see on the show Oftentimes, she never once supported you when these. And, yeah, and I mean, we had a we had a great um, a great meeting together at my house that we that we filmed, and it was awesome. You know, we we had all these things in common. We really delved into you know her when she moved here and what that was like for her, and when I moved here, what that was like for her. We you know we have a lot of those sort of identity. Um, things in common, you know, it was a very unique experience for us both moving here from different countries. And so I felt like we really bonded over that. But like I said, once the show started playing, she, you know, she played a different tune and it, you know, when I was watching it back and all the things, especially that she would say in her confessionals, you know, people have called Garcelle confessional gangsta. Yeah, yes, but they were also that she like, says things on confessionals, but not to your face. Right, exactly. But then it's like, where is if you're so pro black, where is your support for your sister that you were supporting, but now you're not behind her back? Like, where did that? Where did that go? Mm -hmm. You know, why? Why are you trying to throw me under the bus with this Candace Owens thing that is fabricated out of nowhere when we've already discussed and you know that it's not a real thing? You know, where where are you supporting me when your best friend Sutton is, you know, a week after we filmed the reunion using that exact same word attack again on Watch What Happens Live? You know, it's 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 the exact same thing. She should have gone to her friend Sutton and said, Sutton, not okay to say she's yelling at you when she's not. Sutton, we just talked about this last mm -hmm. week at the reunion. You just said that she attacked you on Watch What Happens Live. Like, it's the same, it's the exact same thing. But she only wants to call it when it applies to her. Are those women afraid to go against Garcelle because they will be called Karen's a racist? I would be. If I wasn't black, I would be. You, you see that when you're filming, do you do you see do you sense that like they're they're because it seems like and again audience member here, it does seem like those women do not want to go against Garcelle at all because they they fear of being called a racist. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah, I I mean I don't know that for sure. No one's ever said that to me, but I I would say yeah, I would feel that way. 
Um, and another thing from the reunion, if you look at all of Garcelle's reactions to when Doree was speaking, you know, constantly talking under her breath and rolling her eyes and kind of doing like the snarky giggle, reverse those roles. If that was Dorit doing that to Garcelle, all hell would have broken loose. All hell would have broken loose. But she gets the pass. She gets to do that. And it's just, again, the hypocrisies. So many hypocrisies. Do you think one of the other reasons why you were cast is because maybe you could be the only one that could have an opinion I mean, <laughs> with Garcelle and not be called out of their name? Yeah, I mean, absolutely plausible. Because it's true, I, I could, right? And, and I, I did. I pointed out that it was a double standard and she got really, she got really angry at it. So, but it, but it, it is true. Like anybody can see that, right? It is, it is true. You're calling it one side and not the other. That is a double standard. I want to get into Crystal for a second. Mm -hmm. um, my views as a viewer is that I also think Crystal pan panders to the audience. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal, in my opinion, I don't get anything genuine from her as I watch the show. Yeah. I don't I don't really care about your brother and his and his ex-girlfriend. I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't care. Right. I, I'm going to tell you what I care about. Again, producer yeah. did nine seasons of Atlanta Housewives 2 of Jersey. Like I I, I kind of know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. I don't care about your brother and his ex-girlfriend. I'm crying. Right. I don't I don't I'm really give a shit about that. Right. You're a housewife and you're holding a diamond, so let's invest in your world. Mm -hmm. I really am intrigued by this marriage that that she has, I think her husband seems like a great guy. I'm so intrigued by this so his 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 life, you know, being involved in Lion King, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it came out that Crystal has this you know multi million dollar business with water, I believe it is, but we don't see none of those things. I'm so curious about how one person can lose 14 friends within a weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm so intrigued by that. Yeah. But I don't get any of those things from her. I get I get phony baloney and not Oscar Mayer. Right. So <laughs> as as you're filming with her, and we saw this season, I want to address this. As a viewer and a producer, <laughs> I 1,000% believe she called those women uneducated. Mm -hmm. I watched the show mm -hmm. when Crystal, in her mind, is telling her truth. Yeah. I do believe 100% that Crystal did believe Sutton walking to her room was a violation. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yeah. I Because I, she, she has such passion for it that I was like, I didn't think she did intentionally, but Crystal is so believable in her passion. I ain't mad at you, sis. That's your passion, and mm -hmm. I believe it. When you said, no, sis, you call these women uneducated and saw all these things, she gave you nothing. Yeah. And I thought to myself, wait a second. This woman um, is now pretty much saying things that could question your character, yep. and you don't have anything to say. Yeah. So I said, oh, Anna Marie is telling the truth, girlfriend. Yeah. She told you this, right? Yeah, of course she did. What? Who makes that up? Like, well, I already said, like, I don't, I don't lie. Like, you know, I made a lot of mistakes doing this show, but like, one thing I don't do is I don't lie. Why would I make that up? And it's such a specific thing. So Crystal and I met um, around the same time Kyle and I met. The holidays, about three months before this all happened. And we met, we have a, we have a bunch of mutual friends. And we met at a... The 14 she lost or the four. Well, <laughs> I, I, I know a couple of those... 14 too. Like one question, then we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Is it true that some of those 14 friends left her because when Housewives called them to do the show, Crystal. Ooh, Carlos knows the tea. I heard allegedly that those 14 friends, maybe 13 or 12 of them, were called to do the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and that Crystal told them not to do the show. But when Crystal got the phone call, she never told those 14 friends, and she did the show anyway. Is that true? You're very smart. You're very smart. Okay. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, you're very smart. Okay. Um, so we met, and our conversation went as follows. Um, you know, a friend introduced us, and I'm like, what do you do? She's like, I'm a housewife, 
which like she denied. Yeah, well, because like she's very, <laughs> she loves being a housewife. That girl loves being a housewife. Let me tell you, she loves being a housewife. It is her, she loves being a housewife, okay? A so, housewife of Beverly Hills, not a housewife inside the house with the with the nanny. No, and, yeah, and like the this show is like it is. She, this girl was gonna fight tooth and nail to keep her diamond. Let we we'll get into that. So she's like, I'm a housewife, and I was like, Oh yeah, and you know, you go into the regular questions like, Are you guys really friends? Like the same things people would ask me, right? Are you guys really friends? Do you guys hang out? All that kind of stuff. And then she's like, What do you do? And I said, um, I am a nurse anesthetist. And then she kind of looked at me puzzled like this. And then I said, I do anesthesia. And then she goes, oh, she's like, my sister is an anesthesiologist. And I was like, oh, yes, perfect. She'll know what I do then. Because do you know what a nurse anesthetist is or a nurse anesthesiologist? You do? Me? Yeah. Do you know? No. See, I know. So that's the thing. Oh, not so, at all. <laughs> so we'll get, into that. we'll get into that too. So that's a whole, as you saw, that's a whole nother can of worms. So that was that conversation. And then, so then you see on the show where she's like, well, you called yourself a doctor. Did she say doctor or an anesthesiologist or something like that? And I was like, I'm a board certified nurse anesthetist. And like, that's what I told you. So she made that up. And this is the funny thing too, is we've seen it. You watch, watch the show, right? As Denise said, watch the show. <laughs> you can see when she, you know, she's got that whole thing about her 14 friends. She's got last season or whatever it was where, you know, she went a whole, as a whole season, right, of implying that Sutton was racist because she said something so dark. Oh, She let people yes. believe that Sutton was so racist for a year and then finally said, oh, it was just a feeling. Like that. And then now this thing with me misrepresenting my title. So now... Let's go into this. She, she, she really, she knew that her time was like, you know, getting cut short. She needed to really bring it. And she, you know, who better to like go at than the newbie who, and I, I, I thought that was my girl. Like as soon as I got cast, got our, her number from a friend of ours, called her up. We had this like hour and a half long conversation. I thought she was like really going to have my back. I was like, oh, this is going to be so great. We're going to have fun. We're going to be like, you know, the little spunky ones or whatever. And she, she, and she was really helpful. You know, before we were like going to the weed dinner at Kyle's house, I'm texting her, what are you wearing? I show her what I'm wearing. Oh, so cute. Yeah. Great, great, great. We're in the cars outside waiting to go in. Yeah, I'm here waiting. You know, we're, you know, mm -hmm. and then what, but what do you see in the confessional? Oh, that bitch is nosy. I was like, we were just texting from the car. You know what I mean? So she was a very different person off camera versus on camera. So I was her opportunity to, to start that drama. So when she, so we're on route to Spain and she, she told me that she said that so that she, this, this is what she said. I, I walk out of the Chanel store, all the girls from the Chanel store were shopping and she's outside and production's not there and there's no cameras, anything. I walk out and she's acting normal. And this is like halfway there. We're in like Heathrow or something, right? She's acting normal. And I'm and we haven't spoken since a week before at Dorit's event when she called me a B-word and and accused me of title misappropriation and or misrepresentation. And she she's acting normal. I'm like, Crystal, like, wh what are you doing? I'm like, this is my career. Like, this isn't funny, you know? And she's like, no, 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 it's fine. Like Lisa Rinna used to make up stuff all the time. It's totally fine. I'm just so happy because now I have a storyline, I have my drama for the year, and I'll get to come back next year. Verbatim. 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 She because said we would go to dinner that night, and we would make up a dinner, and everything would be fine. And she, she never, she just kept doubling down, doubling down, doubling down. All the time. Kept doubling down on it. And that, so that when you see me, like not being able to like let it go when she's like, oh, I thought she wouldn't let it go until pigs flew. I'm like, cause you're lying about me. And you admitted that you're lying about me for your benefit. And I trusted you. I, tr there was a, there were a lot of people I trusted in this 
process. I'm a very I'm Canadian. Like I don't know. I'm a very trusting person. You know, I don't. I don't do people wrong in my life, so I don't expect people to do me wrong. Um, my mistake, I should not have assumed that, but I, why would I not, you know, why, why would I assume that someone was intentionally wanting to do bad things to me, you know, or use me for their benefit? Um, you know, but that's, that's what happened. And she was, you know, she was also really the one that was like, you know, leading the whole, oh, you're transphobic thing, that narrative. She was the one who was like really pushing that as well. And then, you know, I brought up to them, I said, you know, if you are so for this cause, I was like, do you know what happened today in Florida? And keep in mind, this is a year ago. And everyone's like, what? And I was like, no, do you know? Since you want a virtue signal and pander so much, do you know what happened today in Florida? And I was like, there was an act passed today in Florida that a healthcare professional can can deny care to anybody in the LGBTQIA community based on their ethical beliefs. I was like, but you didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that because you don't really care. You're just pandering. Mm. I said, you know what? I know that because I actually do care. Her husband recently um, went on social media and we have seen him call Garcelle She's a con in the word conflict. Confused. Uh, confused, I, I mean, yeah. confused. Um, he he obviously um, feels strongly about your experience on the show and, you know, the the, the things that these ladies are saying. Um, but, but, but also not really. Like, because even, like, I was, he, he's the guy, like, he's, he's been doing this, he's been in this world for 30 years. Like, he's like, He's the one who, he's the sounding board for me. You know, even during this whole process, he's like, it's fine, it's TV. Like, calm down, it's TV, you're fine. You know what I mean? So I think it was more, it's just, that's a husband defending his wife. That's it. Like, he, I, he's not emotionally charged by it at all. He's just, he's just a husband defending his wife, which, you know, that's what, that's what they do. So here we are, the season is wrapped. Um, I said on my podcast after watching part one reunion, mm -hmm. I said, raindrops. <laughs> I feel Anna Marie now. And I said, I feel horrible for, you know, saying like, girl, she don't like what was going on with her. I, mm -hmm. I, I thought you were, first of all, you have my complete condolences when it comes to your mom. Thank you. I lost my mother. It changes you changes forever. You. Absolutely. The fact that it was filmed when you got the news mm -hmm. and it wasn't shown mm -hmm. and your vulnerability was so beautiful at the reunion that I advocated for you to come back. I said, look, Carlos King can't even admit as he's watching the show, like, mm, I don't, look, I felt this way. But that's, to me, Anna Marie, that's the beauty of being a viewer. Yeah. How you're, you know, you're only as good as your last episode. For sure. Right? That That's the beauty of reality television. And I was telling my, my listeners that, you know, I, I want her to come back. I think she deserves a second chance. Yeah. She's so beautiful. Um, and she was able to show us a side of her that we just didn't see. And I said, and I felt like she wasn't given the proper setup because when a newbie enters the middle of the season, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Because you're only doing that truly because nothing's happening. And it's sort of like, well, I gotta make some shit happen, I guess. <laughs> you know, damn. Um, so I felt that, well, maybe she'll get another season because we're able to see that. Did you think that as well? 100%. I did. So you thought, I'm going to give me another season after the reunion wrapped? 100%. I did. I really did. Um, and for a couple of reasons, uh, like you touched on, you didn't see me. You didn't see me and my my family. You didn't see me as a mom. You didn't see me and my husband and our like hysterical dynamic. You don't see me at work. You don't see me working out. 
you don't you don't even see me one on one with any of the ladies. You don't see me at lunch with anybody individually. You don't see me bonding with anybody. You don't see me having fun with anybody. You don't see me. You don't see you don't see my personality, right? You don't you don't know my story. You don't you don't know where I'm from. You don't you don't know my mom just passed away. You don't know I have adoption trauma. Like you you know nothing about me. So, you know, I I did. I really thought that I would be back for another season. Um I felt like it would be really I thought it would be really redeeming and I thought that it would be really fun because I was like, you know what? I went into this with two we- in two weeks um didn't, you know, didn't really have like a bearing just kind of like, all right, let's go, you know. And so now that you've, you know, you've done a, a season, you've done a full cycle or whatever you want to call it, you know, you, you kind of know how it is, you know, how it works now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you know, the kinds of things to advocate for yourself to, to put out there, right? Like, I don't care about Sutton's esophagus. I could not care less, could not care less. By the way, I about Sutton's esophagus. I have a small esophagus too. Okay. See, and I'm <laughs> sorry. So then you really were mad. Like, no, I was like, mad because again, I'm a viewer. Yeah. We, we like, listen, we like silly, like beefs. And that, but I and, it was funny. It was see, like, and that's the thing is, I, I didn't think, think that's serious. So I, with Dr. I think, Nicole, and who I love, by the way, yeah. and Tiffany Moon, and I was like, and the ASA. What is happening? Oh, there was, there was yeah. a funny housewifey beat. It was, well, I think it would have been funny had it come from somebody like Kathy Hilton or Sutton, right? But when it's coming from me, a black woman, I'm a black healthcare professional. We get beaten up all day long, beaten up all day. It's not funny. It's not funny when it comes from me, right? It's not funny when it comes from me. That's why, you know, I got Crystal was attacking my profession. The other, those other ladies you mentioned were attacking my profession. The ASA was attacking me. I got, like, I got attacked from so many angles. And yes, I think it would have been funny had it come from somebody else, but not coming from a black healthcare professional. I are too big of a target. Never looked at it that way. If Kathy Hilton, who I love, by the way. Yeah, she's hilarious. She's hilarious. Yeah. If she would have said something about that or... Because it's, it's the shtick of it all. And that's why me as a viewer, I'm like, oh, this is funny, silly, whatever. Because yeah. it's hard for me to take vitamins. That's yeah. how small my shit is. Yeah. So I never looked I'm at it that way. Me. Oh, girls, okay. Listen, <laughs> I have 99 problems. That ain't one of them, right? <laughs> um, I never looked at it that yeah. way. Yeah, it wasn't right. what was said. It was the messenger. And right. who said it was a black woman in the healthcare profession. And somebody who's new. And, new and I don't I don't have anything to balance it out. You don't know me any other way. You I don't I don't have a personal story. You don't see me at home with my family, right? So that's all you see. If this maybe if this was my second season and that happened and you had already gotten a sense of who I was as a person and then that happened, you'd be like, oh, this is ridiculous. But we love her because we love her kids or something. Mm -hmm. But we don't we don't even have that. You don't have that. That's all you have. So it's like you have this black healthcare professional coming in there from out of nowhere, nonstop, nonstop talking about Sutton's esophagus. Of course people were mad. Of course. I I hated it. Trust me. Like nobody hated it more than me. No. Every time I would I would watch an episode, cringed. Cringe. Like, it's still happening. <laughs> it's still happening. Well, listen, you made an iconic moment. Happening. The ratings went up this season, so thank you. I mean, that, that listen, that was one of Sutton's biggest storylines. And you know, another thing too is like, who started that? Where did that come from? Who brought it up? Refresh. Kyle. Ah. Kyle brought it up at her at the dinner, the weed dinner at her house. She's the one who brought it up. It came from her, right? And um, but it it only mattered when I talked about it. Even at the reunion, they talked about it. They talked about it. it came from Kyle. Kyle's the one who who started that whole narrative. And, um, but it only mattered when I said it. And, you know, there, there were so many things that were said about, about a lot of people, right? Like, um, Sutton's eating Kyle's, you know, Kyle was body shamed and sober shamed. And they were talking about Sutton's drinking, 
right? So many things were said. But everybody else has a, um, what do you call it? Like they, they have, what do you call it? Like a, like you know them already. Oh, really? Every, yeah. Everybody has a background already. Yeah, everybody, they have a everybody's, relationship. But no, they're just established as um, themselves I mean, to the viewers. To the, to the, this is for the audience. For the audience. Right. Everybody's established as, as a person to the viewers. So they're saying something like, you know, like talking about Sutton's putting vodka in her coffee in the morning. Like, that's not cool to say. But eh, we've seen all these other things about her and we love her. So that's just a drop in the bucket. Whereas like, my bucket is empty and that's all you see dropped in my bucket. That's it. It's all you see dropped in my bucket, you know? Um, so, but yeah, it's, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of things happen. And, and there's a lot of things that, you know, I, I, you know, I, and I'll be the first to say, like, I hated watching it. I made tons of mistakes and, you know, um, yeah. Recently, the Daily Mail reported that you were not being asked to come back. And Garcelle and Crystal made a comment that you were allegedly let go because of your right-wing beliefs. Right. And that you are a Trump supporter. Right. Are you a Trump supporter? I'm not a Trump supporter. Um, you know, I when I saw that... It just, it goes to show you how people can say anything they want to and it gets traction. Um, we've never even had that conversation. No one's ever even asked me about my political views and beliefs. Um, but for the record, I'm not a Trump supporter. Um, but I do find it really interesting that they feel like they get to bully someone into deciding who they vote for. Like we're, we're, this is not a communist country, right? This is, this is a free country. People can have the political beliefs that they want to have. And the fact that they use that as an, as a way to attack me and bully me is so, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable, really. It's absolutely unbelievable that we live in a day and age where people can be bullied for their for their beliefs. And again, it, you know, it goes back to that pandering and that virtue signaling. Um, ask them what they are. Who do they support? I, I don't know. We've never talked about that before. But for them to just blindly say, oh, we're going to call you a mega Trump supporter. And let's have a real conversation, yeah. right? This is a high affluent town. Beverly Hills is. Right. Right? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure a lot of them are Republicans, and that's okay. I, I, it's so unfortunate because it's like, we don't watch these shows to 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 care about that. Now, I watch The View <laughs> to, to, to get my political well, get information. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I only want to know that. I don't I don't care what Whoopi does at home. Right. I don't want to see Sonny Hostin and her kids fight. Right. I want to understand the political views of these women. We don't watch Housewives to care about that. So for that to be a quote, right. it's sort of like, again, it's this pandering to the audience. That's right. And But what the thing that I will say is a large part of the audience have said, we don't care. Right. And it's so funny since that came out, how many people have come out in support of that saying, good for you for standing on your beliefs and not being railroaded into just thinking or saying what everybody wants you to say, right? Like, thank you for being a woman with your own mind who actually speaks their opinions and doesn't just pander and say what people want you to say. Because I really think that that's the problem. People just bullying other people into doing what they think the masses want to hear. And again, that goes back to the authenticity part. Just be yourself, be authentic, yeah. right? Yeah. How did you find out you weren't coming back to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? They called me. The producer called you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Huh? And just said, we're going in like another... We're, yeah, like, we're sorry. 
Yeah. And you were shocked. I was quite shocked, yes. Yeah, like I said, I really thought that because I wasn't introduced, I wasn't shown apart from talking about Sudden's esophagus, that I really, I thought that I would have, you know, um, another season to do what I thought I was brought there to do, which was to show black wealth, a solid black, loving, happy, hilarious family unit, right? Like I really thought that that's why I was brought to the show. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, they didn't show it here. So that's what next year is going to be about for me. It's going to be about me me being seen and shown and you know how I was so open and honest and vulnerable um with the stuff with my mom and like all my adoption trauma and you know wanting to find um my biological father like that's that's really the stuff that I was wanting to show next year and so that's why I was so I was like devastated I was really really hurt when I found out I wasn't going to be coming back because then I was like, well, then why was I here? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I don't care about sudden esophagus. So why am I here? You know, I like, I have this, I'm such a happy person. You know, I am, I really stand for authenticity and truth and positivity and supporting people and motivating people and inspiring people. And that that is what, I will always make sure is put out when it has to do with me going forward because I feel like my life story is too important, you know, and I, I won't, um, I won't do anything that doesn't, um, that doesn't serve me in that way. Um, so I, like I said, I was really excited to, to show to show people that representation of Beverly Hills, a reputation, a representation of a strong, wealthy black family unit that they've never seen before. Mm. So what's next for you? Because everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. And, you know, in light of um, that, another, you know, uh, you can call it an attack. You can call it bullying. That that stuff in the Daily Mail with the quotations from Garcelle and Crystal all over the place. Um, you know, I really feel like it was my mom. I feel like it was my mom. Mm. I think she was protecting me. Because I think, you know, once you're kind of in the machine... You're like, no, I need to make it better. I need to, I need to fix it. I need to fix it. I need to make it better. I need to, I need people to see me, you know? And so I don't, I wouldn't have saved myself. I, if they had invited me back, I would have gone back. And I think it was my mom intervening Mm. and saying like, honey, you're not good for this. (laughs) Like this is, this, you're not good for this, honey. You know? Um, so, um, but I have a lot of plans. This, this is, you'll see, you'll see. You, I have a lot of plans. There are a lot of things um, going on. Um, and uh, I'm excited. Like I said, I just, I want to do all the things that align with who I am. Positivity, truth, authenticity, inspiration, motivation. I, you know, I've been through so much in my life and to be where I am now and have this amazing life that I, I'm so proud of and, and so lucky and so blessed to have, um, I just want other people to, to know that they can do it too. Mm-hmm. You know, they can do it too. You just need to have the right people around you, good, supportive, loving people around you and um, make good decisions, work hard, and you can make anything you want happen yeah and i believe that and and the thing is this there's more for you to do Mm -hmm. um you are such a beautiful woman beautiful spirit you're very smart you're accomplished thank you and one thing i would like for you to do because when a reality star 
um, is not asked to come back. They feel like they have to rush and do something, right? And I love the fact that you are figuring things out. Yeah. You got some, you, you know, you got some irons in the fire, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love for you to, like you said, your mom is is guiding you because yeah. our mothers in heaven, right. they are our guardian angel. That's right. And if you sit still and you, you, what I want you to do is to be still mm-hmm. and to allow your mom to guide you because that's why she's in the heaven. She's yeah. in the heaven to, to, to guide you and your sisters. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but you have to sit still and, and listen to the voices because I do that all the time with my mom. I talk to her every single day and she guides me. She tells me like, girl, don't, don't be doing that. <laughs> that's my mom. She calls me girl. Um, hey mom. <laughs> you know, like girl, what are you doing? So I, I would love for you to listen to the, the voices and, and to be still. And I, it, it's unfortunate because I really want you to come back and I was talking to Gertie from Miami Housewives recently, and there's a friend of named Kiki Bart who is yeah. so funny. Yeah. And I was saying to her, like, people always say, like, there has to be one black girl on the show. And she is like, I hate that. Like, no one says there has to be one white woman on the show. True. It's always the minorities. And you are such a great juxtaposition of Garcelle mm-hmm. in the best way possible in the sense of we get to see another side of the black experience right. in Beverly Hills. And I, I feel sad for us as a community that we won't be able to, to see that. So obviously, when you're not coming back, you were a large part of the storyline this season. So I want to congratulate you <laughs> on the ratings increasing and being the most watched season since my season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Thank you very much. So without you being there, what do you think these girls' storylines are going to be? I mean... Well, Crystal's never had one. So without me, she's definitely not going to have one at all. Um, I hope that, you know, I hope for Kyle that she, I really hope she finds peace. You know, whether her and Mauricio make it or whatever she chooses to do going forward that makes her happy. I just hope she finds peace. Me too. Um, I hope Dorit and PK are okay. Um, I know they, you know, they've been going through a rough patch. So I hope that they are able to keep their relationship together and strong. And I truly hope that she's not too, you know, emotionally scarred or damaged from um, being labeled a racist because she's not. She's a really sweet lady. Um, I hope that Erica, um, she had a great season. She did. She, she, I feel like she was shining. Um, her performance was amazing. She's revitalized her career. So I just hope she keeps going along that path and just hope she just keeps shining. Um, Sutton, you know, I hope her and her horse are good. Her, you Not know, find a man, keep going with your hobby shop, whatever you want to do. Not the dating app. Um, and Garcelle, you know, I hope she, I hope she stops leaning into, you know, being a bully. Because I don't think being a bully is a good look for her. Um, so I hope that she kind of backs away from that a bit. And, you know, I I hope that she finds love because she just keeps talking about her husband from like 13 years ago or whatever. So, you know, I, I think that would be nice for her. You guys should have bought her back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is my PSA. You guys did not ask me. I'm going to say it anyway. Oh if once again the season starts off a little soft, oh my god, I think it would be very nice to surprise us again. Oh gosh, with the mid-season <laughs> appearance, I, for one, so would funny. like to see that because I need these girls to wake up. Because without Lisa Renna, these girls are asleep. Calming app. Oh um, it's, it's, we, 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 we need some action. Okay. And baby, baby, you are that. Oh my God. But no, thank you, sister. Oh my God. I, I really love appreciate it. it. Thanks.